don't all look at the scene through glass. Now, a few months ago, before the summer, I made a video with a Jaguar F-Type SBR in Monaco. It was part of a campaign I was doing with Michelin. And in that video, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm back in Monaco in an F-Type, the memories. Well, I can't believe I'm back in Monaco in a 4C. If you would have seen the video yesterday, you will know that due to a slight hiccup with the Giulia Quattrofolio, Alfa Romeo very kindly lent me this 4C Spider to bring down here to Monte Carlo. Officially, I'm not actually in Monte Carlo right now. I'm on a hill overlooking it, so this is France, but let's not get into the complexities. Now, buzzing around this morning, I was thinking about making a video. Do I still miss my 4C? But then I realized I've already made that video about six times. So instead, I thought I'd answer some of your questions. Okay, we're gonna kick things off. These are all from Instagram, by the way. Apologies if I mispronounce any usernames. Uh, Garrett's Kaplan. Uh, first question, in with the first question. Is the sound better with the top off? I'm assuming you're talking about the 4C Spider. Uh, this car in particular has the race exhaust, as I had on my launch edition 4C, and it sounds freaking mega. I'd forgotten how loud it was, and for sure, with the roof off around town and in the tunnels, sounds insane. Raven Holt 117, do you have plans to come to Scandinavia? Absolutely. So funny enough, when I was about 18 or 19, I did my first ever epic road trip. It was with my best mate, Rob, who appeared on the channel uh, during Vlog Angeles. And we drove from Stockholm up into the Arctic Circle, into Finland and down to Helsinki. Still one of the best experiences of my entire life. And I for sure plan to get back to Scandinavia at some point in the near future. Soldier 13 asks, when will the manual Ferrari 360 arrive? Um, uh, good question, hopefully soon. As you can imagine, I've been going crazy on the research, uh, probably for the last couple of months. Uh, a lot of you have been very kind, sending me links to cars all over Europe, the US, South America. I've seen almost, I think, every single manual 360 that is online. I've also been fortunate enough to see quite a few that aren't online or advertised as well. Um, basically, as soon as I go back to the UK, I'm off to look at a number of cars. There's probably two or three at the moment that are strong contenders but I'm really not gonna rush this. I think buying a slightly older Ferrari, the worst thing I can do is rush it. I need to find the perfect car. When I talk about the perfect car, I mean the perfect, the car that has the perfect history. Yes, I got an idea what spec I want, but I'm willing to forgive some elements of spec uh, to make sure that it's a good car, because I really don't want it to catch fire outside my house. Best value for money supercar right now. That's from CJR1285. I honestly would say any McLaren. I think any McLaren from the 570S to the 720S, probably to even the P1, is value for money because the way they perform does not correlate to their price. If you look at anything else in that price bracket, they are class leaders by a mile. So yeah, McLaren. Carl's, Carl as Mengual. Carl as Mengual. Now with the manual 360, have any opportunity for the F-Type? So the F-Type SVR is off the table. Um, I freak myself out about the depreciation around the SVRs. Mega as it is, uh, used SVRs now are cheaper than new Rs. And that, that scares me. That, that shouts a lot of money going in the bin to me. Uh, there's an argument to say that I could replace the Abarth with a V6S F-Type uh, and just sort of trick it out and put a loud exhaust. It's still... I mean, they're still fabulous cars, the V6s, but I think having, having owned a V8 and spent quite a lot of time in an SVR, maybe I'll be a bit bored with the V6. So yeah, I think for now, probably we won't be seeing an F-Type uh, on the channel consistently for a while. Rainer Bortesi, um, I'm definitely not gonna be pronouncing any of these right, am I? Why do you still live in the UK? Very good question. Um, it's a really fantastic question. Uh, two things, uh, well, actually three things. I grew up there. I am very proudly British. Uh, my family and my girlfriend. Uh, that's in no particular order, by the way. Um, so I've honestly, this last year, been heavily considering leaving the UK, uh, mainly for Monaco. In fact, I even started looking at apartments here in Monaco, but also for LA. But in the grand scheme of things, as amazing as these places are, and as much as the UK does annoy me a lot of the time, it's home. It's definitely home. Um, and I do... I do love it there, but also the ones I love are there. So I think it would be quite hard 
to leave it behind. Aman Hunjan 01, what car would you take if you had the choice of an ACR, Dodge Viper ACR, Ferrari F40 or a Huracan Performante? I mean, that could not be more different. Uh, Ferrari F40, Ferrari F40 straight away. Um, Acel Gambino, what's your highlight of 2017 so far? Uh, I always say go with the first thing. The first thing that just popped into my head for some reason was Sebastian Vettel. Uh, yeah, doing another video with Sebastian Vettel I thought was awesome, really good fun. He just seems like a really cool guy when you're hanging out with him. Uh, and it's always great that you guys enjoy the videos as well. So uh, yeah, let's go with that. Uh, Mr. Umar, when will you do another video with Lenny? Soon I hope. Lenny messaged me the other day actually. I need to arrange a plan to film with him, but I'm also hoping to get him on the Behind the Glass podcast. Again, another plug for the podcast because it's going to be coming back strong as soon as I get back to the UK. Uh, if you don't follow it, if you haven't listened to it before, you can check it out now on soundcloud.com forward slash seen through glass or on iTunes by just typing in behind the glass. It will come up as a podcast. I am working hard to get it on uh, all the other platforms, Spotify and Google Play and all these different things. Uh, so stay tuned behind the glass. Coming back strong, hopefully with Lenny. Uh, Richard Gould, what is the plan with your garage? Is it going to be a daily, a classic and a supercar? That is the dream. That is absolutely the dream, but I need to work it all out. Um, for sure, uh, as anyone who watched my video yesterday will know, I'm very undecided what to do with the Abarth. Well, I really am in a mess about that, and I need to do a separate video with it when I get back to London. Uh, but for sure, if I can manage to get those three in my garage, oh, winning at life. Uh, Harris Photography, will you drive across the US? And if you do, would you try and go to a bunch of cars and coffees along the way? Uh, yeah. He's on it, it was McGann. Uh, I really want to do that at some point, coast to coast America. It's definitely something that's kind of bubbling away in the background that at some point I want to try and arrange. Uh, but I would, it, I need months to do it because I kind of want to go all over and visit lots of different people and places. And it would be a really cool thing to do, I, I totally admit and agree. Beanie 03, which is the car you've most regretted buying? Uh, I, I, this is easy. An Audi A6 4.2 litre V8. I don't know, I wanted it because I was going to convert it into an RS6 lookalike because, you know, I, I actually have no explanation as to why I was going to do that, but that was my plan. Um, and uh, it was just an awful car. It was an awful car. It did about 3 mpg maximum. It looked grim had a horrible interior, everyone thought I was a computer salesman or something. It was just, yeah, that was a disaster. I had it about five months or something, and then I changed to the TTS. Woohoo! Started the channel with the TTS. Sim Simon, what was your first job? Uh, my first job was working as like a, a runner in a music studio, a recording studio. When I left school, all I wanted to do was be involved with music total lie all I wanted to do was work in Formula One uh, but I didn't know how so my other great passion was music um, which I pursued and yeah I worked it was really really cool uh, really busy studio met some amazing people worked on some really cool projects and was an incredible first job Craig JW1 it seems too coincidental that both you and Paul sold your dream cards at approximately the same time is the real reason for this due to the fall in advertising revenue from YouTube rather than house buying can you confirm this is a factor of your decision no one is judging um no not 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 for me personally I can't speak for Paul but I would say there are there are a couple of things around this subject firstly I personally didn't see a huge drop in ad revenue there was a, a sort of big scandal around this about three or four months ago a lot of youtubers making videos saying oh my god all oh my ad revenues decreased personally I didn't see a big drop um, secondly something you have to be aware of is that us UK youtubers and specifically Paul and I speak a lot we see each other a lot um, it's a very weird life being a youtuber so we come to each other for advice and we question things and we try and motive each other motivate each other and inspire each other and so a lot of the time we have similar thoughts um, because you're always conferring and Paul and I got to a point where we both realized we had these amazing cars that were costing us a ton of money and not really being used and we both had things that we wanted to do with our lives where the cars were slightly holding us back uh, so I think we kind of just motivated each other into a similar decision and it's quite reassuring when someone else goes yeah I th you know I might do that as well you kind of feel like maybe you're not such an idiot <laughs> so yeah anyway um, it definitely didn't affect my decision well I think that feels like enough questions for today um, I could go on forever I always want to answer as many of your questions as possible but uh, that would probably be a six hour YouTube video and I'm not sure how many of you will want to watch that anyway thanks for tuning in for those of you that have uh, I'm gonna wait now for the Julia Quadrifoglio to hopefully 
turn up. Uh, if it doesn't come for any reason, I'm not too fussed because I'm in Monaco and I do think that tomorrow I'll be able to get out and film some pretty cool content, maybe even with the 4C Spider. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found it informative. It's been a while since I've done a Q&A, uh, so I, I enjoyed it. Uh, so I hope you did too. Make sure to subscribe for all the Vlogari adventures still to come.